At the outset, I wanted to again thank the Election Commission of India, their officers and staff for organizing this conference. I think all of us know how much hard work it takes in order to set up one of these conferences. I am pleased to make this uh, brief presentation on what the Philippine Commission on Elections did during our last elections. Some of you may have heard that the Philippines just conducted its general elections last May 9th, 2016. Close to 57 million Filipino voters trooped to 93,000 polling precincts and chose among approximately 50,000 candidates to elect one president, one vice president, 12 senators, 290 members of the House of Representatives, 182 governors and vice governors, 648 members of provincial councils, 3,900 mayors and vice mayors, and 11,100 city and municipal counters, all in one day. I am a new kid on the block in respect of uh, elections. I was appointed chair of the seven member Philippine Commission on Elections in May 2015, which was exactly one year before the general elections in 2016. Uh, 2016 was the third time that automated elections were being held, and I wanted to challenge my colleagues to try and outperform what we did in 2010 and 2013. Really, in terms of our objectives for the 2016 elections, we wanted to simplify what we were trying to do. First and foremost was credible elections. And I think when we say credible elections, it is not sufficient that the elections are honest. They must be perceived to be honest by a good majority, not only of the citizens, but also of the international uh, audience. And second though, and I think this is also comes hand in hand with what has been uh, discussed during this conference, we were looking for ways to enhance the voting experience. We were trying to be voter-centric in the way we did things. So we looked out for the comfort and convenience of the voter, firmly believing that if there is a high voter turnout, that will enhance the mandate of the people who are elected. And if the uh, mandate of the people elected is strengthened, that will also in turn strengthen democracy. And how did we wish to accomplish these two objectives? Well, we had a general strategy, which was ICT. ICT standing for I, inspiring the COMELEC workforce, consulting and engaging our stakeholders, including our critics, and T standing for being transparent, efficient, and accountable in the way we did things. But specifically, I think we just essentially wanted to learn from the lessons of 2010 and 2013, as well as lessons that we gained from attending conferences and fora such as this. We wanted to improve upon our performance, and in doing so, we identified key result areas and key performance indicators by which we think our performance should be measured against. And this was uh, through the creation of a scorecard. Just like students, uh, we all get our report cards, which we have to bring home to our parents. We thought that we had to create our own report card that would provide a quantitative basis as to how the performance of the uh, Commission on Elections uh, would be assessed for the 2016 elections. So for example, in terms of voter turnout, you will note that the total voters in the Philippines is around 54 million, and this uh, increased by about 3 million from 2013. But you will also note that our voter turnout in 2016 was close to 82%, the highest in Philippine electoral history, I think brought about by number one, there was an interesting group of candidates that ran for the presidency. And also, um, and we will discuss this later, other uh, voter information techniques that we initiated for this election. Overseas Filipino voters, which was tackled by the previous panel, we have around 10 million overseas Filipinos. You will note though that historically, we have not been able to register as many as we want. 
In 2013, only 7% of these 10 million was registered, although we were able to double that in 2016. We were also able to double the turnout. But we think that there is still a, you know, a lot of work that needs to be done in this area. And the initiative of the ECI in respect of creating a portal for overseas Indians, I think, is a, um, something we can copy and hopefully we can learn from. Absentee voters, these are the soldiers, the media people who get the opportunity to vote in advance. Again, we were able to double the number of these voters. Voter profile, um, you will note that similar to other um, countries, it would seem that the females constitute now a larger majority, albeit not that very large. Um, so it's about 51% of our voters are female and 48% are male. Although in respect of candidates, you will note that in the Philippines, a good number of the candidates are still male, so about 80%, and we're looking to increase that in future elections. Ballot printing was something also that we thought we could improve upon. We were able to print 55.7 million ballots, and these are precinct-specific ballots. You cannot change the ballot, say, of polling precinct uh, X with that of polling precinct Y because the candidates are different. And we were able to uh, print these ballots in a record 49 days, primarily because we were able to shorten the ballot that we were using from 27 inches to 20 inches. In terms of our voter education campaign, the candidates' debate was perhaps the number one activity that really uh, got our voters to be excited and to really think about the candidates that were running for the elections. Um, for the past 24 years, the election management body of the Philippines was not involved in the candidate debates. But this 2016, we were at the forefront. Although, again, this was an interesting experience because we thought it was a good idea when we started considering this in September of 2015. But with just eight to nine months before the elections, we had a problem in respect of uh, the time to organize these debates, the expertise to hold them, and the resources to pay for them. So we partnered with the biggest media entities in the Philippines. We, to us, that was a good template for a public-private partnership. So we were able to mount three presidential debates in three uh, regions of the country. Unlike uh, previous debates, were in, they were always held in the capital. We wanted to make sure that they were being held outside of the capital in the uh, islands, the three main islands of the Philippines, which are Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So in terms of a game changer, I think that debates really played a very large role. And I think we saw that as well in the US debates. We tried to copy some of the best practices of the US debates. And I must say, though, that if you really want to have an informed citizenry in respect of the issues and in respect of the candidates, I think debates are the best way to do so. We also um, made sure that there were proper election day signages and posters, but these were not just during the election day itself, but even before the elections, we already set up signages in high pedestrian traffic areas so that the voters will already start to think about the elections and start to think about the process as well as the candidates that they would vote for. Some of the um, signages that we produced can be seen in the exhibit. We also wanted to familiarize the voters with the vote counting machine that we were using. So we were doing road shows to schools in malls where uh, our voters could have a hands-on experience in respect of the vote counting machine. And Aside from the regular website of the Commission on Elections, we also uh, put up a separate information website just focused on the elections. Accuracy, again, just to make sure that these elections were uh, perceived to be credible, it was you know, important that these features were put in place. So a random manual audit to make sure that the vote counting machines were counting properly. Transmission of results was a very key component. As you know, the longer it takes to announce the winners of an election, 
the higher the chances of people saying that there was cheating or that there will be violence. I think we were able to do a record three hours. Well, before it would take us three weeks to count our elections. In 2010, it was three days. But this 2016, three hours after the polls closed, people already had an idea who the next president was going to be because 60% of the results had already been transmitted. Also, we had a voter receipt where in just like in an ATM machine, if you slide in your ballot, you will get a receipt which will show the candidates that you voted for. Also, in order to help our disabled and illiterate voters, we had audio support wherein you could hear from the machine the people that you voted for in case you were not the one who personally ticked off the boxes. Other security features were the digital signature, data encryption, protection of the memory cards, UV detection features, all in accordance with our automated election law, and all to make sure that the security of the system was being maintained. Similarly, we had mock elections. Practice, we, we believe that practice makes perfect, so the more mock elections you conduct, the better. We had a source code review to ensure that political parties and civil society organizations had access to the source codes of the various election systems that we were using. Public ballot, printing tracking system, and an innovation this year, which I think again was very important, a results website. We have 92,509 polling precincts with about 800 voters per polling precinct. Each of the results of those polling precincts were posted in a website so that each and every voter can do their own audit of the results. They can basically add up all the results of these 92,500 uh, election returns, and that, that should total the number of votes given to each candidate. Election services, okay, we also wanted to make sure that our polling places were more accessible, and you will see that there were 289 voting centers, but this continues to be a, a work in progress. Indigenous people's polling place, which I think has been uh, discussed in other panels, were in uh, Filipinos who belong to a tribe do not like to mix with uh, the um, ordinary or the uh, Filipinos who live in the cities. So the way to entice them, to get them to vote, is to create polling precincts where they actually live. And we pioneered this in a, in a province uh, uh, called Mindoro, and there was a 90% voter turnout because they were voting among themselves. Also, we pioneered the concept of providing legal assistance in the polling precincts themselves. So this was in partnership with the uh, Philippine Bar, also, medical assistance. We set up medical assistance desks because, you know, in order to help uh, voters who uh, may get dizzy or have uh, high blood pressure because of the lines uh, voting, so we were able to set up medical assistance desks. Also, you will see that because of this, the, the protest cases went down, again, because of the swiftness of the results being transmitted. Election-related violence also went down. The accessibility audit was increased. Mall registration is another interesting feature. We thought that uh, many Filipinos, because there are a lot of malls now in the Philippines, would like to register in a place which is air-conditioned, which is well-lighted, well-ventilated, and it's easy to go to. So we pioneered mall registration in 2016. We're hoping to make mall voting a reality in 2019. So again, just the strengths of technology, we were able to leverage on that. It has an audit log. It is easy to really show to people why uh, it works. And here, again, we spent a lot of uh, time and effort in order to explain the process to as many people as possible. Also, transparency features in the system. And we tried to engage uh, various stakeholders to explain to them why, how the system was being conducted, and also to allow them to freely observe the preparations being conducted by the Commission on Elections. Qualitatively, again, that's the quantitative part, and qualitatively, the Carter Center was there in the Philippines observing 
the major components of the elections, and they said that the 2016 elections marked a significant improvement over previous Philippine elections. The National Movement for Free Elections also said that the 2016 elections was better managed, and the Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting also said that it was by far the best of the three automated elections since 2010. We were also be, you know, able to get a, a few headlines in various Philippine papers to say that close to 90% of Filipinos believe that the elections were credible. This is also interesting. Uh, because of the debates, uh, we were cited by the U.S.-based Civic Hall and Democracy Fund for the innovative use of social media. 303 million election-related posts. Now, I don't know if that was broken by the recent uh, U.S. presidential debates. Way forward as to what we want to do in order to, again, build on what we've done in 2016. I see that I have run out of time, so I thank you for your attention.